Welcome to the Food Forest course. Each week we offer assignments and information to guide you step by step through the design of your own food forest. Here's some information to consider as you venture down the path of material this week. You all are joining me from all sorts of different places and climates throughout the world. So it's hard to describe the best way to assess your water considerations for your food forest. But we need to know, it's important to know that when you're investing your time in planting trees and plants, that they're gonna thrive. And one of the most important considerations in this endeavor is to consider how much water you have available for them to thrive. First, it's important to make sure that you're planting your trees in the right time of year and that you have your soil prepared on the front end before your trees arrive. So to learn more about how to prepare your soil, you can check out our soil video about your food forest. But in this video, I'm just gonna talk about water. Begin with considering what time of year in your climate is the most beneficial for planting your trees. Identify the site where you wanna plant your food forest first so you can match your species to what the qualities are of the site. Make sure that you have access to a good water source nearby. Now we may have different types of water sources. Here I'm in Portland and I have city water, which can be expensive. Other places might have a well or maybe you're carrying water with buckets. So identifying where your water comes from and then siting your food forest as close as possible to where your water comes from will help save you time and energy with being able to water your trees. I recommend doing a simple percolation test before planting your trees. This means that you dig a hole and you test how fast water infiltrates into your soil. If water doesn't infiltrate quickly, then you may wanna use compost or some other sort of organic matter to help open up your soil so that you have more pore space and better drainage. Many fruit trees are gonna get fungal diseases if they don't have good drainage where they're planted. If your soil drains too quickly, then you may wanna retain the water more. And for that, you can also add in organic matter. You would also wanna make sure that your water is retained in the soil and doesn't evaporate off. So all of this goes in your soil building plan. Here where I live, we have a dry season and a wet season. We have about eight months of wet and then four months of dry. And our dry season comes in the summer when the plants are growing and need that water to support their growth. Unfortunately, when we get our water here on the west coast of the United States, it's often at a time when the plants are not biologically active. So it's important for us to be able to store large quantities of water here in Oregon so that we can use it throughout our dry growing season. I'm standing here next to my rainwater harvesting tank in my landscape in urban Portland, Oregon. This rainwater harvesting tank is collecting rainwater that comes from our roof and storing it until we wanna use it. We're just using it mostly for irrigation. We did our calculations to determine how much water we could collect off the surface of our roof. And actually, because we have a single story home, we were not able to put in a tank that would hold as much water as we needed. So that was why we prioritized this water for irrigation. We're growing a kibia, which is a plant that has a fragrant flower and a fruit on the water tank so that it doesn't degrade in the sunlight. And so we're using this vertical space for vegetative growth. The water tank also serves as a barrier so people can't see in from the street into my backyard. It gives us more of a sense of privacy. So acknowledging that this water tank doesn't store enough water to last throughout our dry season, it was very important for us to do a number of other strategies to develop the soil and be thoughtful about our planting and the companions for our plants so that we could maximize the water retention in our soil throughout the dry season. Thanks for joining me for the Food Forest course this week. I hope that this video provided inspiration for connecting with other people as well as other species and bringing creativity into your design.